So the next part is a listening part. We're going to listen to uh, the High Flyer magazine. Uh, they're going to talk to a top executive, Josh Cantor, about his work habits. And we need to listen as to whether they're true or false. Listening exercises are good practice, okay? Stick with it. You may have to play it a few times. Don't forget the focus is about the grammar, countable and uncountable nouns. You're looking at calls, emails, iPad and so on. So look, think is it countable or uncountable? So let's just read the questions. Josh doesn't get many calls or emails. Is that true or false? He never switches off from work. He has an iPad and a laptop. He doesn't go on many business trips. He gets a lot of exercise. He doesn't eat much fast food. He drinks a lot of coffee. He gets a lot of days holiday a year. So that's what we're listening for. Uh, you may have to listen to it more than once, okay? Point two. Do you have a work phone, Josh? Yes. I take it everywhere with me. Do you ever switch it off? No. I get a lot of calls during the week and at the weekend. I always check my messages before I go to bed. Is that stressful? In some ways. It means I never switch off from work. But at the same time, I don't miss any important calls or emails, and I get the job done. How about computers? How often do you use them? Well, I take an iPad on business trips. I can check spreadsheets, watch the news, follow the stock markets, and so on. I've got a Twitter account which has about 1,000 followers, so that keeps me busy. And I've got a laptop at work which I can unplug and take home if I need to. So how often do you access the Internet? All the time, I guess. And how many hours a day do you think you work? I probably work about 10 hours a day. But I spend a lot of time traveling and work on planes, in hotels, so it's probably more than that. How many hours do you usually sleep? I usually sleep about six hours a night, maybe a bit more at the weekend. Do you get any exercise? Yes. I cycle to work and I always take my running shoes with me on trips. I'm doing a marathon next month. And how about food? What do you normally eat? I eat a lot of fast food when I'm busy. Burgers, sandwiches, pizzas, and so on. And I eat ready-cooked meals in the evening. Curries, pasta, that sort of thing. How about fruit and vegetables? I don't eat many vegetables, and I generally drink fruit juice. Do you drink much? I drink a lot of coffee during the day. And in the evening, I do spend a lot of time with clients, and some of them like to go out for a meal and a drink. So I do drink alcohol but I try to limit the amount I drink. Do you drink water during the day? Not really. I have a mineral water with lunch, but that's about all. And lastly, about how many days holiday do you get a year? I don't get much holiday. About a week in the summer, and then maybe a week in the winter. I love skiing, so I sometimes take a long weekend, leave on Friday, and come back on Monday. Well, thank you, Josh. It sounds like you're a very busy man. I guess I am. Okay, so you may have to play that a few times. Let's talk about the answers. Josh doesn't get many calls. Well, that is false. He gets lots of calls. He never switches off from work. That means he never stops thinking about work. So that is true. He has an iPad and a laptop. That is true. He doesn't go on many business trips. Well, that's false. He goes on lots of business trips. He does he gets a lot of exercise. That's true. He's running a marathon, isn't he? 
He doesn't eat much fast food. That's false, because in the evening he does. And seven, he drinks a lot of coffee. True. And he gets a lot of days holiday year. That is false. He doesn't get very many holidays at all. He works very hard. Okay, so don't forget, check back through about the grammar, which is countable and uncountable nouns. Have a look at it, okay? So this one is one of my favorites, writing questions. So this one is writing questions about each of the topics and you need to use how much or how many. So we have an example there. How many hours do you work a week? How much free time do you have at the weekend? Okay, so pause the video and have a go, okay? Because I'm going to tell you the answers now, okay? How many emails do you send a day? How much exercise do you get a week? How much time do you spend on the internet or social network sites? How many days holiday do you get or have or take a year? I'll say that one again. How many days holiday do you have a year? How many days holiday do you take a year? We can use different vocabulary for that. How much sleep do you have a night? How many people do you talk to in a day? How much coffee do you drink every day? How many hours do you spend traveling to work? Okay, if you've got a lot of those right, that's good. So now with those questions, think about asking people and think about how you would answer those questions as well. Okay. So now to vocabulary. Uh, we're sticking with the same theme of countable and countable nouns. And what we have to do here, we have to group the words together, match the list of items one to 12. So we have the example number one, money. You have a note, that's the paper money, you've got the coin, and then you have a small amount, which is a cent. Um, so, number two, gas, coal, oil. These are all types of fuel. An easy one, pineapple, banana, grape. These are all types of fruit. Wood, plastic, iron. What do we think? They're all types of material. Fact, statistic, number. They're all types of information. Information. Running, golf, tennis. Yeah, they're all sport. Letter, envelope, stamp. They are mail. All to do with the mail. Tea, juice, coffee. Yeah, it's a drink. Car, truck or lorry or a van, transport. Maize or corn, wheat, rice, they are all actually cereal. Newspaper, magazine or a book, these are all print media. And the last ones, film, DVD, TV show, they're all types of entertainment. Okay, 
So they are words that we group together and the words in the column, the box with the number one, they are like the quantities of all the words grouped together. That's how we describe like a note, coin, a cent, that's money. Gas, coal, oil, they are fuel. So that's how we talk about them when they are grouped together in the word group. Okay? Okay, so now what we need to do in part three here is we need to take the words from exercise one and put them into this, uh, these sentences. Okay, it says they're complete the sentences with the words from one and add an S where necessary. Okay, so let's see how we go. You have a go and then I will give us the answers. So I've only got a 10 pound note in my wallet. Now what is processed to make a variety of chemicals and fuel? It is oil is processed to make a variety of chemicals and fuel. 1.5 billion or something are eaten every day. What do you think? Bananas. Okay, so we need an S. It's countable. Most chopsticks are made from wood or plastic. Some things show that most people don't get enough sleep. Statistics. Statistics show that most people don't get enough sleep. Is that you? She likes outdoor sports like rugby and football. I got a letter from my bank, but I, I don't want to open it. It's better to buy a real fruit. It's better to buy real fruit rather than fruit juice. Cycling is a very cheap form of transport. Rice is grown in many countries, including China, India, Indonesia, Vietnam and Japan and Thailand, of course. The sale of e-books are growing very quickly. And the last one, cinema numbers are dropping because more people are watching films online. Okay, now the end, I've said to you as a group many times before that it's the end of the word that really is important in English. In Thai, it is the tone and in Chinese, it's the tone. But in English, it's really the end of the words that separates the real meaning. And it also makes you sound much more natural if you use the end of the word correctly. So I've got a 10 pound note, no S. Oil, no S. Bananas with an S. Most chopsticks are made from wood or plastic, no S. Statistics, there is an S and so on. So the end of the word is very important.